Hey everyone, welcome to the DEI working group um, for January 26. Small group, but small but mighty. And I think Matt, oh, I should start the transcription. There we go. Um, Matt C was unable to come today, so I'm going to facilitate in his place. I will do my best. Um, so let's jump into the agenda. I think Matt put the link in. I'll put my name here. And we can start, uh, let me share a screen too. Are you sharing your screen? Yeah, oh, sorry, yes. I'm yeah, yeah. delayed. <laughs> yeah, when I'm done eating, I'll turn on my video. <laughs> I was like, why isn't it sharing? It's like, oh, I have to click the share button, not just the window. <laughs> so many clicks. You know, it's, it's good that we can't think what we want to have done. Right? It's, it's good that we still have the button that <laughs> prevents things in our brain. Sometimes it would be helpful. Other times it would be horrible. <laughs> right? That's right. <laughs> okay. So the first one is to go through some issues and PRs. So let's hop over here. And see what we got. I'll tell you that I mean I I kind of put together the agenda here. Like a lot of the issues and PRs are just kind of they're uh, associated with the action items below. Okay. You know what I mean? Yes, I do. Should we? Uh, we can go kind of do all of them in one. Okay. Yeah. I a holistic approach to our agenda yeah. I like that a lot um, and I can tell you right now that the AI Elizabeth's for the most part are not completed so <laughs> just gonna no throw problem. that out there um they're half complete not fully okay uh, okay yeah. and I think those were the biggest PRs because yeah they were they're meeting minutes that we can merge but then there are those that's those two that those last two Ones. Yeah, I'm working on those. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you think we can merge these two? I think so. We didn't look too deeply. Yeah, don't. What's up, we Justin? Don't. Hold on. Yeah. Hey. Good morning. Justin. Hi. Perfect timing. <laughs> yeah, we were just looking at your comment here. You're, when you, yeah, when you join a meeting and your picture's on the, <laughs> 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 the screen. <laughs> We have invoked Dustin essence into our meeting. Okay. Um, we were just looking at this PR. So I think we're good. To... Okay. It should be a clean merge. That's really what I'm focusing on right here. <laughs> I trust everything else that you said perfectly. Take your word for that. So I'm going to go ahead and merge it. Squash and merge. Let's Boom. do it. Boom. All right, cool. Yep. And then this one is what is this one? We based on latest changes and managed serve. They solved the merge. Wow, Justin, you're like solving all the issues today. I'm going to squash and merge this one too, unless anybody has any issues with that. Right. Mm -mm. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Justin, for sure. My gosh. All right. I, I still have more, a little more work to do there, but at least this is makes the first stab at getting it in there. No, this is great. And I, I will say that we've been kind of cascading this request to all working groups to start cleaning up minutes. So very helpful. Thank you. Yeah, I need to do that for the community ones too, I think. I don't know. I get that thing from Grammarly that says this document seems long. So I should probably take a look at that. Uh, okay, we have quite a few issues here. Um, let's start with the oldest ones. What do we what do we think? Looks like some of these are just metric ideas that need to be Yeah, I'm wondering if we should, like we capture a lot of metrics ideas in the um, spreadsheet, spreadsheet. And 
I'm usually not a fan of doing, I don't know, it's funny because I'm not a fan of doing like capturing two things in two different places. Mm -hmm. But these issues do have um, like, like narrative history mm -hmm. to them. Like True. you can see like, some of them have, you know, anywhere up to six comments. Yeah. Yeah, like I would hate to lose all of this. Oh my gosh. So one thing we could do is we could close the issue and then in the spreadsheet, in the remarks column, link to that closed issue. Mm -hmm. And just in the spreadsheet, track it as a metric, whatever we call it, like um, considering. considering. Mm -hmm. Or we could leave it open here. I just, it's, it's kind of up to people. I just, I kind of like, I don't like when issue trackers get long. I'm not a fan of using issue trackers for idea tracking because I have a, I get a sense that if there's a real issue, sometimes it kind of gets lost in the noise. I'm not saying these aren't real issues, but like if there's an issue that has some urgency, then we have this weird mix of issues that have urgency and issues that are just but I, other people can have, yeah just hanging out but other people can have other opinions maybe this we, is a naive question but did we move to like how how metrics get tracked is it all being done in a spreadsheet now or i guess i missed i, I missed the yeah so we, where, where things are now we've been using this for a while but yeah my, my thought is that at least creating the metric in the, the allowing newcomers to create metric ideas in this spreadsheet is more welcoming and we could close the issue and make a note that we've moved it to the spreadsheet with a link to the spreadsheet. And then people would know that we were not ignoring their issue if they're newcomers. Good point. So would we, we would close the issue and then would we add it here. Yeah, yeah, and we would we would put a comment in the closing of the issue that just said it's moved to this spreadsheet um for for tracking and processing and this is the time of day or the time of the week or this is when these meetings are for this particular metrics development something like that so it sounds like we need someone to kind of go through wait go well, away. justin you had a comment did you have a comment on that I guess I'm just a little little confused what the, the process would be. Like when I think of a spreadsheet, like it doesn't seem like a bi-directional process to me. It seems like a very much like a read-only kind of format. I mean, unless you're a maintainer, of course, but like if I were a new contributor and I were coming to look at just a spreadsheet of metrics and ideas, to me, I would feel like that would be much more of a like a read-only, like I, I wouldn't be guided towards you know, proposing an idea, I'd be like, oh, this is what they're doing and this is how it, how it is. I don't know if that makes sense. I just don't see where the participation is coming through from the yeah. spreadsheet. Right, the spread, you are correct. I mean, the spreadsheet is very like, uh, it's like just super pragmatic <laughs> in terms of where every metric is. It doesn't really capture a conversation. You know what I mean? Or like, um, and, and I'm with you. I can see how like a newcomer would be like, I'm not adding row 71 because I feel like it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, uh, this is someone else's work. You don't want to you don't want to edit in this and mess it up. And yeah, you, you don't know because you don't you don't know the project yet. Right. Versus an issue tracker like this, which is obviously it's different. Yeah, I'm just wondering if there's things we could use, like, I remember we talked a couple months back, like there's things like some of the coaching that I give to teams I work with that use issue trackers for monitoring ideas and kind of having open discussion is having things like issue templates. So if somebody was coming to propose a new metric idea, you have some kind of template that they can fill out when they go to open an issue that's, oh, you have a metric idea, click this button. Or um, if they have something else about repo maintenance, well, okay, so you can use this template. And like there's the project boards piece, which can maybe provide a little more of a visual to this. Also, GitHub just launched their new um, their projects, their their beta for their projects one, which is actually more of like a table view for 
um, sorting GitHub issues and you can put them into a table and move them around and still have the discussion follow them in the little table sheet that they give you. I'm just wondering if there's things that maybe, like I, I know like, tracking things in two places isn't good either, but maybe there's some workflow changes or, or, or new ideas we could try with workflow just to make sure that we're not losing that opportunity to get new ideas or or um or losing that input process yeah right uh, so I mean, these are all great points um yeah we've kind of got both because like the spreadsheet has been like insanely wonderful in terms of tracking progress like it as we move through metrics, it's been, um, but to your point, you don't want to lose that like first point of entry that enables people to make that initial contribution. And it's also nice if someone opens an issue, um, an, uh, sorry, a metric idea and an issue, like we could then ping them and say, hey, we're going to be developing this issue into the, in this meeting. Yeah, this would you like to join? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's this table view that you were talking about, Justin? How do we, can we like create a table view based on labels? Um, I think so. I'll, I'll share a link here in the chat that'll take you to the page. You can go to the projects link at the top now and they'll show you the little beta uh, tab. I haven't, I haven't actually dug into that yet, but let's jump right in. They just launched. <laughs> All right, here we go. Do we add a project? What was yeah. it? Project yeah, one. Oh, yeah, that was only that was the original project, like more like a Kanban board that we maybe okay. experimented with. I forgot what we did with this one. Interesting. Okay, how do I get back to okay? So the project beta. Let's add a project. Uh, I don't New metrics. Oh, wait, go to the chaos organization. Oh, it's organization, not repo level, it's org level. Oh, I guess so. We go back. What was the existing project, Elizabeth? Uh, it looked like it was from like an older way that they had. Maybe we had been. the same conversation a year ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. Well, when I saw January 13th, I'm like, how did <laughs> how do I not remember this from a week ago? <laughs> I thought it just like just did it through it. I don't know. Um, so this were okay. Oh yeah. So then can you drag? Like, can you put things in there? So like metric idea. Okay. So this one, one in the middle. Yeah. Boom. Done. <laughs> I don't know, currently working on, or we could but also. I, work I, okay, but I would suspect this has to be an open metric. Yes, it looks like. Or I'm sorry, an open, I'm sorry, an open issue. Open issue, yeah, I don't see, is open. Wait, let's see if we can. Huh. Real-time demo of GitHub's new features here. So we could say like, uh, Okay, let's put it over here. And and would that go in backlog? No, I don't know. What goes in backlog? Put it anywhere for now, but I'm sure it looks like it works. Yeah. So then we could just see that list. Add yeah. a note. Yeah. So if you have things that aren't maybe warranting an issue, or you want just to put something as a placeholder, you can just do like a little quick note there too. Um, I put a link in the Zoom chat as well because I use these project boards as part of my work. Um, and I, I try to group them into, I use this as kind of like a two week sprint cycle for this. So I use this as kind of a way to track what am I doing right or what's going on in this in this part of the team right now in the current sprint. And then every two weeks, like we have a retrospective where we go through it and see like, okay, were these things completed? What's left to do? And then clean out that column. So it's like kind of a um, so there's like the, the the order of kind of the flow of things, but also I, there's a process. Like every two weeks, we do a, we do like a review, go through the board, and make sure that the things that we planned for this sprint, for you know, if we look at the beginning of the two weeks. Like here's what we want to try to get done for the next two weeks. The two weeks pass by, we come back and revisit, and then reset the board for the next two weeks. Um, that's one way that I do it, but I mean, mileage may vary for sure. 
Justin, right. do you care if I click on this tab? Sorry, Matt, uh, while we're recording this, like it feels like that oh, might be. It's, it's open, it's public, it's okay. it's meant to be a, just want to a make learning sure. model. So. You already <laughs> clicked on it anyway. I know, so. <laughs> I know, I was gonna have to go back and edit. So, Ooh, thank you, Justin. All right, so yeah, you can see of like, so you pull from this essentially? Yeah, so backlog is all the things that are, are out there and have to be reviewed at some point and then I use the next sprint column as a way to kind of show like what's bubbling up. Like, okay, here's what we're wanting to look at further down. Current oh. sprints is what is happening like right now in the next two weeks. Oh. Um, in progress, self-explanatory, done, same thing. Um, there's the waiting on external column, which is if you get something that's blocked or you're, you're waiting on someone else to, to do something before you can move forward. Just an easy way to kind of visualize that really cool so my my thought is is that we could do something along the lines of go back to the chaos one elizabeth that we could have like the metric idea column would be like older metric ideas or archived metric ideas and we could put metric ideas that are maybe like 18 months old in there we could close the issue and just say, listen, we have this board that does still track all of these in one place. You know what I mean? Um, and so then, but if somebody still has a new metric idea to Justin's point, they can still add it in the issues, but we kind of keep that laundry list of issues a little bit more trimmed down. So like, I look at like, um, there was one open July 25th, 2021, number 372. Right, like, so that, you know, that might be within our window that we're happy to keep it kind of on this front page. But anything older than that, just it, it's still an idea and we can still track it in the spreadsheet too that it's considering. And we could even put a link to the project board. <laughs> like if you want to go see the, the discussion around this, it's, it's you can find it in the project board. But it helps reduce this issue list a little bit so that when you do come to it, at least in the chaos project, I feel when our issue lists get long, we stop using them. We just look at it and we're like, yeah, let's oh, we'll, we'll do that next week. <laughs> to that end, I wonder if maybe to help kind of it won't it won't help with the backlog of issues we have, but to that end of like how we use the issue tracker as a way to manage these ideas, I could in the next week work on a proposing an issue template for the metric ideas and open as a pull request and then we can have a discussion next time on like are we asking like, is it set up the right way is this how we want to try to structure this and then try to drive that conversation around an issue template so then that might make it easier if there's new ideas like how do we manage that what's the like do we want to like, time box things like okay we have a month to discuss this before either we op we keep it open or we close it yep or we, um, we archive it into this okay i like that right okay well i'll i'll add an action item there for me for the, the next meeting well i'll add an action it sounds like two things kind of came of this one is the issue template that you were just talking about justin and then the other is why don't i take an action item to like um go to the project page i would create uh that column that would be like archived metrics ideas i would connect it to the spread like I'll, I'll try to kind of work out a, a reasonable way that would still enable people to post new issues um while at the same time we don't overwhelm the issue tracker um, but we're still kind of capturing the conversation. We still have the conversation archived somewhere if somebody wants to bring it back out. So how does that? I like this as a as a first step. And I think what I think this would help us kind of move towards is also thinking about process. Like I think one thing to make it easier when we see this backlog of issues and even some of those pull requests that are a little tricky for us to think on like, well, what's the next step here is having like criteria of like oh like here's the process like we'll go through every couple of weeks and then follow this list of criteria like i think it's more long-term big picture but i think that could be kind of putting us on that path 
and it would make it a little easier and less overwhelming to do all the triage and management. Great. So, thumbs up for Great. me. And, okay, cool. The other thing that I think on that process point that I, I need to be sensitive to for next week is that the process doesn't become too complicated. Like every, here's what you do. A new issue comes in and then in six months, you label it, you archive it, you put it in the progress issue progress tracker thing you go to the spreadsheet you like you know what i mean like there's that we don't have like 15 steps just to get an issue off of the issue board and people are like you know what forget it <laughs> i'm not gonna even bother to do this so making sure that it's simple as well i think too um justin maybe in that issue template we might want to just set some expectations for um you know, what kind of response. So like we were kind of overwhelmed with issue ideas right now. And so with all of those, in addition to like reviewing all of our old metrics, like the DEI working group has a whole lot to do on our plate. So, um, you know, we, we want to, maybe we can communicate that in the template idea, like, hey, just a heads up, we have a lot of great ideas on deck, but you know, we're a limited group. And <laughs> so, <laughs> so be patient with us, I guess, essentially is, <laughs> is uh, what I'm saying. Makes sense. Yeah, so like I'll that. definitely, I'll come back next week and we can shape around the template and see what's missing or what we want to add into it and go from there, at least on the template piece. Perfect. So in light of that, I, I know there's a way to do this, um, but I don't remember how to hide a, met a label. I don't know how to I remember how to do that. I know you can see only that label, but is there a way to hide your issue view? Like I was gonna say, can we just hide the metric ideas for now and look at everything else? If not, I can just do it manually. It's totally fine. <clears throat> I feel like it is, but I don't know how on the top of my head. <laughs> Unless we, you pick all the other labels, filter labels. Oh, here we go. Click return to exclude labels. Boom. Uh, oops. Nope. Click return. No. That did not, <laughs> that did not work. Okay. Anyway, I'll mess with that. Uh, now I'm really, oh, yeah, okay. Shift and click return, okay, or command, okay. Sorry, everyone's I, I, looking. I the magic link, <laughs> I, it took me a minute. I, I put the magic link, if you click, it should um, open the same view with all the metric ideas gone. There it is. Yeah. Yes, oh. <laughs> we're beating you GitHub. <sighs> Love it, okay. <laughs> So now we can move forward on some of the more urgent stuff that uh, is not a metric idea. Uh, let's look at this one, agree on a format, oops, for metric metrics toolkit. So I think we're doing this right in the, uh, in the metrics models group. Oh yeah, we really are. We should probably move. Oh yes. Oh, Emma said yes. Looks like someone named German Prey did not respond. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I totally forgot that I had even <laughs> comment and that Emma had replied. So, well, I was I was thinking about it until today, and yes, I <laughs> I agree. All right, then we're just gonna close. <laughs> Emma, you can scroll up a little bit. Yeah. Scroll up just a little bit. Just I'll go all the way to the all the way up to the top. Yeah, like when 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 it started. Okay. Right. Okay. I, I do think we're capturing quite a bit of this. Some of this too is about like I'm wondering if we could use some of this in the the reflection team, which yeah. all of you are on. <laughs> yeah, as a matter of fact. Which um so like part of what 
part of what we need to do over the course of the next two years, right, is help other projects think about how they could, you know, um, approach inclusive naming or how other you get the idea or how other projects could run a survey. And so part of these um, these toolkits from Emma are it's like a description of what it is. And it also the toolkits also say like this is gonna take you four hours. This is gonna take you six months, right? Right, exactly. And so it, it kind of helps gauge what the recommendations are for other projects to know that like if they wanted to set up, you know, local communities in another country, like that's a probably a very long and complex process and it might take you a year to get that done. Um, versus something that might be a little bit like something a little bit more approachable. So I'm wondering if we could follow something like this for the audit group as we're thinking about how, like things that we publish for others to use. You want to copy that link and pop it in that DEI audit doc? I will. Yeah, I will. Because then you can close this. Let me do that really fast. Don't close this quite yet. Well, I did already. <laughs> already closed. Okay. <laughs> I got you. I'll give it. I'll just. I can. Yeah, I can pop it. I got you. Okay. All right. You you go ahead. Okay. All right. So let me just refresh this. Okay. Um, okay. Interview campaign with underrepresented groups in open source. So this was opened by Justin a little while ago, and we did have some conversation about that. Um, Justin, do you want to? Mm -hmm bring this back up like yeah it looks like we my feeling is for the working group it's something that would require a, a high amount of bandwidth but maybe for the reflection group this could be something we tie into that um like the whole idea here was just to try to add more of like you know avoid that echo chamber effect and make sure that when we're creating these metrics and, and doing this work that we're soliciting like input and and getting some external validation from folks who would be most impacted by these metrics. Um, so it's like, I, I feel really strongly about it, but at the same time, I know it's, it's a lot of work and it's not going to be easy. So I, I'm not sure. Like, I don't feel like the working group is the best place for it, maybe, because it is such a high, like, bigger amount of work, but I, I don't know where, where to put it or where, where, to, where to bring it. Who has other thoughts on this? I have no thoughts right now because I I was doing the other thing. Interview campaign on represented groups open source. Is it is the is this issue just what it sounds like from the title? Yeah, um, just to make sure that our metrics are we're being you know broad in our coverage of met, of our own metrics and that we're not just mm -hmm. you know the things that we know about that we should measure. You know what are things that we haven't thought of yet i see gotcha 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 um like this could be something since we do have um quite a lot of ideas we haven't yet developed um i feel like a, an interview like this would generate a whole lot more ideas or that would be the goal i guess so maybe this could be something we do like in the latter part of the year i don't know yeah i i i, I love this because there's an issue like you don't have to go back, but there's an issue in there that's like um, metrics ideas for events or something like that. And it was an issue that I had posted that came from talking to event organizers <laughs> like they're like, here are things that we work on that you're not asking us, but they are clearly things that are centering DEI within our events, but you're not asking us, which is fine, but they're like, there's just there's a a mismatch between those two and they're like we'd love for you to ask us about these things <laughs> so so that's what those captured ideas were and i think this is something quite similar to that like talking to people who 100 percent. okay um so yeah I, I totally agree with this um I, i'm thinking and i agree with the Justin, I think I overheard you saying maybe this is something for the audit team. Yep. Like, 
Yeah, I'm one I agree also. And then I'm wondering if we couldn't actually use some of the funds to do this. Cause this this would be a fair amount of time. Like scheduling interviews, like you've done interviews, like scheduling them running like a lot of us have done interviews. Like it's just they're just they're just time intensive. They're wonderful because they generate so much uh, like new insight, but they're just time intensive. And I'm wondering if this isn't something that we could think about budget wise with the with the audit team. Like incorporating into that work or outsourcing it or yeah, something yeah, something. I mean, just because like that's that's a big ask for a person or a group of people mm -hmm. to do interviews especially if we you know say we did 20 interviews like scheduling and running and like reflecting on 20 interviews that just takes a long time um so like actually like using some of the funds to help do the scheduling like maybe the audit team can help run them i, I don't know i'm just thinking out loud but yeah actually outsourcing or like working with the student or Something like that in too. I know Errol, who commented there on the issue, is also yeah. uh, also was simply secure with Georgia. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think Georgia may have even mentioned trying to bring Errol in at one point too. So okay, that'd be great. I think there could be an overlap in trying to direct that. Okay, that'd be great because I that pr would probably be we can we're in the, kind of the wrong group talking about this but that would be that, but we're all in that other group too that that might be a, a, something to talk about in the audit group i, like I can this put this on the agenda for next monday's meeting too just so we have it that'd be audit. great yep i was also putting that other thing about the um Um, what are they called? Interestingly, the metrics toolkit discussion, that one that I'm that I put in for next week, that that link no longer exists at Mozilla. The methods that toolkit up above, no, all the way at the top. Yeah, that link doesn't. Yeah, that's interesting. Yep. So I just I just captured the the issue because I think there's enough good detail in that issue. Okay, should we move along then? Uh, next one is add code of conduct enforcement to code of conduct at event and code of conduct at project. And we said in November, this is in the code of conduct project, okay, but needs to be added for code of conduct events. We should add it when that metric is reviewed. So how do we make sure that that gets to the metric when we review it? Let's see. Okay, so this is adding enforcement. Oh, right. Okay. And we did it for project, but we still need to do it for events. And that we said we were going to add it when we review that metric. Okay. And then code of conduct, we did it for project, but not events. Gotcha. Correct. Um, so well, that, yeah. So we have, I mean, code of conduct at events is one of the metrics that we are reviewing right now. You know what I mean? That's that one that we're like, this is going to be easy. Oh, right here. Yeah. Okay. That's this one. So we are doing it. Okay. Did we add enforcement? Enforcement. Oh, wait, that brought up project. Oh, it did. Oops, I have the wrong link in there. What does the text say? Uh, updating at what what text? Code of conduct for a project, yeah. 
All right, well, when we're updating, I, I have that in the wrong spot then. Okay. That should be down. I just need to copy that or cut it and paste it. I just moved it down. I just had it in the wrong uh, row 61. I just had it in the wrong row. Oh, perfect. Okay. So then we'll need to make sure that when we review code of conduct for event, that we have that. Like, how does are we going to jog one, our memories? Does the project one have enforcement right now? I don't think so. Uh, actually, I think it does. It does. Well, way find enforcement and reporting mechanisms. Yeah, I think they have it in there. Yeah. Okay, so we should probably I think we should probably be done with code of conduct in a project first. It'd be great if we could finish that out. Yeah. As a reviewed metric. And then I will right now start a new review Google Doc for a code of conduct at event. Okay. And put the request to include enforcement in there. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that would be great. And then we can close this issue. Okay. So I will put a note in here. I'm going to do that right now. Sorry, I usually mute when I'm typing. Yep, yep, exactly. I'll start the review doc and I'll. Yeah. Yes. All right, and I seem to have lost the issue list that had all the metric <laughs> metrics taken out. Oh wait, Justin still has it in chat. Okay, there we go. Um, look how much cleaner this looks. <laughs> if you just hide all the other ones, I know this is why you're, this is like approachable. You're like ah, <laughs> I can look at the list and kind of see what. Okay, new metric focus areas. Um, add two new focus areas for DEI working group. We talked a lot and we did not have much traction on here. What is this one? So the idea was Justin's and the idea was to add two new focus areas, um, virtual events and in-person events. And right now we have them lumped as event diversity. Right, yeah. What do we think about doing that? We kind of have everything in here. There's like virtual events. And yeah. And the only time that this differentiation shows up is in the badging process. When somebody says, when they apply for a badge, you say whether it's a virtual or an in-person event. And then based on that selection, Kafaya or Elizabeth, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but based on that selection, the metrics are slightly different that are part of that evaluation. Yeah, because some things don't apply. Like if it's a virtual event, it's usually not, uh, there's no cost think, to it. Yeah, so like diversity access tickets is- Family friendliness doesn't apply, yeah. Yeah. So that's the only time, that's the only place in the chaos project where we differentiate 
these two things, I'm pretty sure. Justin, how do you feel about this? Are you still kind of, um, is this still something that you'd like to see happen or? Yeah, I'm pulling up the spreadsheet just to take a look at the, the event metrics again. But I feel like just dividing maybe the event diversity one into those two are, wait, event demographics. Oh, sorry, no, I was just misreading. So, okay, looking at this, I think we could just go ahead and like, to me, it seems like it'd be as easy as just splitting this event diversity one into those two categories, like in-person events, virtual events, and then trying to um, divide them more, but or do we have metrics that could fit into either category? Yeah. yeah. Yep. So like those top two, the speaker and attendee demographics, that just became, mm. that turned into just event demographics. Um, we still like have that, code of conduct. Code of conduct would exist both places. We still would have inclusive experience. This one is virtual only and family friendliness is in person only. Maybe, maybe an easier way thinking about this is we just annotate our metrics like a pen, like if it's a virtual only event or an in person only event, then we just append that to the metric title. So like event locations in person and uh, bandwidth virtual, you know, and then maybe try to distinguish it that way instead of trying to force them into two different focus areas. Mm -hmm. And that yeah, I'm wondering if it's easier work too. Yeah, I, I'm wondering if we could just like put that in the description, to be honest with you, like this metric is applicable for in-person events, period, and then describes the metric. And then this metric is applicable for both in-person and virtual events, period. And then describe, you know what I mean? We could just add, there'd be three sentences that we could add in person, virtual, and both. That'd be pretty easy. I think if we added these just to the remarks for each of these, I, I think that'd be enough and we could just close the issue. Are you saying, Matt, to put it actually in the metric description itself? Yeah, it'd just be, it'd be a starter. It'd just be the first statement in the description. So it would either say, this is applicable for in person. And then the rest of the description, this is applicable for virtual. And then the rest of the description. Like we don't even have to change the description. <laughs> we would just say this is applicable or this is applicable to both in person and virtual events. So if we um, going back to our list of issues for this metrics tracking work uh, for the mm -hmm. reviews, we have a little checklist. Maybe we could add our own item here that says, did you, did you, if this is an event metric, did you say if it's virtual or in person? Yeah, that'd be great. Yes. Agreed. All right. Let's just do that too. And that way we don't forget as we, cause we haven't reviewed any of them yet. So, um, no. as we do that, we will, uh, add that here. Sorry. I'm going to mute. Yep, exactly. Awesome, thank you. Oh, we only have two minutes left. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so I'll just mark a thing in here, add it to checklist for review metrics, and we'll include a Oops. All right, and then I put a little note in the spreadsheet as well. Awesome. <coughs> well, we did do some stuff. 
So, I mean, bit by I mean, bit, it was pretty productive. Sometimes this cleanup stuff is necessary to, like, you know. Oh, I think it's yeah, very necessary. And it had been a while. This is good. I didn't do my metric thing yet. The new code of conduct of event. I just couldn't. couldn't okay. You want us to do yet. an action item for you? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll probably do it right now. But okay. Well, that way, next time you can be like, "Yeah, I totally did that." Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Start new. Review. <laughs> Doc. Okay. All right. Uh, we're good. Anything else? We have one minute. Anything else? We didn't do it any of the rest of our agenda, but these were action items that I did not finish. So no, when you're a facilitator and you control the time, you can you know, strategically make it okay for you to not have to <laughs> Exactly. That's oh, the I was going to update you on my action items. I didn't the, ran out of time. I'll update you at the start of next week. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's just how it goes. <laughs> So, uh, anyway, all right. I hope everybody right. has a really good day. I'll stop sharing. All right. Bye, everybody. All right. Take Bye. care, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.